What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of the HTC One. This is the latest flagship from HTC. They've put a lot of hopes and R&D dollars into making this phone a reality. Let's go ahead and put it through its pace and see if it deserves a spot in your pocket for the next two years. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We've got a lot to talk about here with the HTC One. We're gonna talk about specs, call quality, build quality, screen, uh, a lot about Sense 5, the camera, boom sound, performance, battery, what I don't like about the phone, and give it a full conclusion. So let me give a disclaimer, I'm gonna start doing this on all of my phone reviews. This device was used for nine days as my daily driver. The first five were tested using a pre-production unit, and the last four were tested using a full production model. This does not support LTE in the US, uh, but it was tested uh, on AT&T's HSPA Plus network. Uh, specs, let's go and run through what this guy's packing. It's got a lot. What you're looking at here is a gorgeous 4.7 inch full HD screen. So it's 1920 by 1080, giving it a crazy 469 pixels per inch, which I believe is the highest of any phone currently on the market. Uh, it's running Android 4.1.2 at launch. Uh, powering it is a pretty beastly 1.7 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon quad core chip. It's a Snapdragon 600. And it's got two gigs of RAM, be available in two different storage sizes, either 32 or 64. Uh, no room for external storage cards, so leave those micro SD cards at home. Uh, a lot of talk has been about the camera. The back has a four ultra pixel camera. We'll talk plenty about that. Uh, the front is a two megapixel affair. It's got Wi-Fi, all the ones you'd expect, 802.11 ABGNN, but also something new here, 802.11 AC. I don't have anything to even test AC with, but this does make it a little more future-proof uh, over the next 12 or 24 months. Bluetooth 4.0, all the rest of the stuff you'd expect. Uh, giving this guy its juice is a 2300 milliamp hour battery, which we will talk plenty about. And it weighs 143 grams or 5.04 ounces. All right, so call quality worked pretty well. I didn't have any drop calls on it um, during my usual round of tests. I did have several drop calls though during my nine days with it, uh, but nothing more or less than any other phone on any other network. It worked very well. Call quality was pretty solid. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and jump right into build quality. And that's a big part of the story with the HTC One. This phone feels absolutely incredible. Uh, in the hand. This is one of the best, if not the best feeling phone I have ever used. Every inch, every nook, every line of this phone you can tell was given a crazy attention to detail. Uh, HTC absolutely hit this one out of the park. The phone feels incredible. You pick it up in the morning, it's got that cold feel due to the full aluminum body. Um, HTC clearly learned phone by phone by phone. You can see the evolution. Look at their previous Evo models all the way back to the first Nexus. Uh, they got better and better in each phone. This is the culmination uh, of years of knowledge and they nailed this one absolutely. Um, this is one of the best built devices I have ever tested. This is one of those phones I actually enjoyed picking up and that's such a weird thing to say. Uh, but the way it feels in the hand and the cold feeling on it, uh, it's just absolutely outstanding. I can't say enough about how well this phone is built. Everything about it just screams quality. Um, next, let's jump to the screen. This thing is an absolute beauty. I thought the screen on the DNA looked good, but wow, 469 PPI is absolutely incredible. Uh, and it's a little bit higher than the DNA because it's only a 4.7 inch screen and not a five inch screen. Uh, this is the best screen I've ever seen on a phone, including my limited testing with the Galaxy S4 and a full battery of tests with the Xperia Z, iPhone 5, and including the Droid DNA. So if screens are important to you if you want beautiful pictures, you want beautiful video, uh, this is really the phone to look at. And saying it's incredible doesn't really do it justice. Pictures and text all just pop out of the screen. Now looking forward to comparing this to, of course, the Galaxy S4 in more detail when we get it. Um, but if screen is important to you, you're gonna have a very hard time finding anything that's better than this. All right, so next let's talk about Sense 5. HTC Sense 5 really gets out of its own way, which is really, really nice. I like the new lock screen. You can personalize it a little bit and they have different themes you can pick from to find the best one for you. Uh, they really did a nice job with it. It's not as heavy as Sense 4 and previous versions used to be. Uh, some few nice things here, the way you organize apps is kind of nice. You can see the weather widget right on top. If you pull down a little bit, you can pick either alphabetical, 
custom or most recent. You can control the grid size here if you want to. Uh, however, you want to have it shown if you want three by four or four by five. I like showing more per screen, so I've selected four by five, um, but you can customize that very easily. Uh, Blink feed is also a nice addition. I've got mine set to tech, but you can show it to pull and all kinds of other information you want. Uh, think of it as like Flipboard for your home screen. Um, I did not choose to set it as my default home screen, my main one. I moved it two screens off to the side. Uh, you cannot turn Blink feed off. HTC said it's essential to Sense 5, but if you choose not to use it, you can move it off to one screen and deactivate all the feeds. You can see what it looks like right here. When you click an article that you want to read, it doesn't launch a web browser per se, it launches a um, sort of a mini browser where you can see the content right there. So it's nice you don't have to wait for it to really queue up. HTC did a very nice job with that. Uh, so Sense 5 doesn't really add anything you couldn't get from third-party apps or launchers, but for the first time, it really doesn't detract from the overall Android experience, which is really the biggest compliment I can give to an Android skin. HTC also nailed their email client here. I love the way it looks, love the way it performs. It performs very similar to the native Gmail app, but with a unified inbox, which for me is really huge. Uh, they also have a new backup system, which is pretty cool. Actually, it'll do full backups of your phone, which you can download from another HTC device. Uh, you can log in either via HTC's own portal or via your Facebook credentials, and I got to test this when I switched from my pre-production unit over to production model, and it worked very, very well. Um, you can also move from other phones. They made it very easy from an iPhone or a Samsung device or any other manufacturer. Uh, they made it really simple to transfer everything over. So if you've been worried about how to get all your contacts, you don't want to have to deal with Google syncing, um, HTC has you covered here. Um, another thing that I really like with Sense 5 is multitasking. If you double tap the home button here, and we'll talk about that a little in a little bit, I love the way the multitasking window looks. You can see nine icons here, and you can pick which one you want to use. Previously in Sense 4, you can only see one, maybe two off on the side. Uh, you can close things here if you want by just swiping it right off the screen, and it works pretty well. Swipe off, and you are good and close applications that way um, as well. So a really nice addition here to Sense 5. All right, so let's next talk about the camera. There's been a lot of talk about ultra pixels, whether or not it's a marketing term or what it means. Um, but HTC really proved, at least for me, that it's not about the megapixels. Uh, we did a huge camera comparison post. We compared this to really pretty much every other major carrier release smartphone. Um, so the major phones that are out on the carriers in the US, uh, we compared the cameras. The HTC One's camera really did a nice job, even so far as to say it's amongst the best cameras on a carrier phone now, uh, really on par with the Lumia 920. It did an incredible job in low light. The ultra pixels means it's got a bigger sensor. It's able to pull in much more light. Uh, those images looked great in places where other phones sort of showed pixelation or darker. Um, this camera really did a wonderful job. HD video also looked great. We did a few video comparisons. I will say though, on the video comparison we did, there was a bit of popping noise in the audio. And that was done using the pre-production model. When we switched to the production version, uh, that popping noise was gone, but it looked great, about what you'd expect with a 1080p camera. Uh, one of the downsides though, digitally zoomed images start to show the lack of megapixels though. So you plan on doing a lot of digital zooming, or if you want to blow this up to giant sizes. Um, you may want to test it before you do that. But if you just want to print out normal size images, you want to upload to Facebook or Instagram, uh, this is going to be a great camera for you. One of the other really cool features on the HTC One is right down here. It's called Boom Sound. Uh, it is an incredible speaker when compared to other phones. It's not just front facing speakers that make it sound so good. HTC said there's a lot of proprietary technology that went into there, including of course Beats Audio, but algorithms and how it interprets sounds. But if you compare it to another phone, uh, you can really hear a difference. If you compare it to the iPhone 5, for example, you can definitely hear how well this sounds. Uh, if you're a big speakerphone user as well, uh, you're really gonna appreciate having that speaker built in. Oftentimes, I heard some jokes on Twitter from other reviewers that were saying, neighbors called to complain the music was too loud and they were playing music through here. Uh, and it really does an incredible job. Obviously, that's an exaggeration. Uh, but these are the best speakers I've ever heard on a phone. 
All right, so next, let's talk about performance. It's pretty much what you'd expect uh, without any lag from HTC Sense, which is quite nice. This guy's got a beastly quad-core Snapdragon processor. Most applications don't even take advantage uh, of quad-core yet at all, but this thing is an absolute beast, and it screams. Everything moves quickly. There's no scroll lag when you're using a browser, whether you're using Chrome uh, or the built-in browser that comes with it. Uh, everything about this phone is fast, from games to loading applications to scrolling. Things just hum along very quickly. Uh, it did get a quadrant score of 11,850. It's not the most scientific test, but I do use that as a benchmark for other phones, so certainly scored uh, very high there as well. So do not worry about performance. You're getting incredible performance uh, out of this phone. All right, so let's talk about battery life. Using this phone for nine days, I feel I'm very well educated on battery performance and how well it works. Um, so again, it's got a 2300 milliamp hour battery. Let me run you through my daily usage so you at least get some appreciation um, for what my numbers mean. Usually it comes off the charger around 7 a.m., usually about two to three hours of talk time. I have two emails being pulled down, checking every five minutes. Brightness, I don't have auto brightness set. I like a bright screen, so I've got it sent to generally around 80%. Uh, the amount of internet I do uh, varies on the day, uh, but there's internet, Twitter, Facebook, texting, Instagram, all kinds of other stuff going on. Uh, Blink feed is running in the background, and usually I'll put it on the charger around midnight-ish. And usually I've got right around 35% of battery life left when I put it on the charger. And for me, if I can get through a full day with 20% plus, uh, I consider the battery life to be pretty decent. Uh, the moral is it's on par with really anything else out there. Uh, if you're worried about battery life from the HTC One, don't really worry, you can get through a full day. I use my phone pretty heavily. Um, and those include some gaming time uh, in there as well. If you wanna play games for three or four hours, you're not gonna be able to get through a full day. Um, I did watch YouTube videos on here and really had no issue uh, at all getting through a full day. Uh, but definitely know this does not have a replaceable battery on it, at least one that's easily user replaceable. Um, so you are gonna have to either carry an extra charger around uh, or monitor your battery use. All right, so I've been very positive with the HTC One. I really like most things about the phone, but it's far from perfect. Uh, there are some things that I don't like about it. First, I really don't like the button layout here. I had to keep reminding myself about the first days that HTC logo is not a button. That is just a logo. Uh, having only a back and a home button, the home button skewed off to the right, took a while to get used to. I really would have liked a dedicated multitask button. I found having to double tap to get to the home button, get the multitasking a little bit on the annoying side. So go ahead and access it uh, by doing that. Um, another negative, GPS had a hard time locating me when I went to New York back home. Uh, it definitely took much longer than I expected for it to realize uh, I was in another state. Almost a full 12 hours. I could do it manually and I could let it know, um, but doing auto updates, it should have picked my location out a little bit quicker than that. Uh, also another negative here, it doesn't have room for expandable storage. So if you want more than the 32 or 64, gigabyte size you're gonna get, you're going to be out of luck. Um, I can forgive though, not a removable battery for design, um, but for some that could definitely be a negative. So keep that in mind, depending on your usage, you figure out which phone is right for you. So what's the conclusion on the HTC One? If you couldn't guess already, I really like this phone and is getting one of the highest reviews and the highest compliments I've ever given a phone. It gets a really solid 9.5 on the Techno Buffalo reviewing scale. This is one of the few phones I've really been excited to use every day, and that says a lot. We test a ton of phones here. It can be a bit of phone fatigue. Uh, this one really got me excited about the future of the mobile industry. Again, after seeing phones released for the past few years, it weren't anything flagship to get excited about. It's really refreshing to see the HTC One here. The best compliment I can give it is this is the first phone that I would be willing to sign a two-year deal on my own with since the iPhone 4. So if you're worried about getting a phone or you want one that's really gonna be an outstanding to use, this is the one to get. HTC's slogan is quietly brilliant. And with this phone, they should be a little louder about it. Everything about this phone is incredible. HTC hit this one out of the park. I can say unequivocally the HTC One is the best Android phone I have ever tested, and it may be the best phone I have ever tested, period. If you wanna get something that's gonna work for you for the next two years, you want build quality, you want a gorgeous screen, and you want cutting edge specs, the HTC One is an incredible choice.